In this lesson, we're going to look at some of the developer tool features provided in modern day browsers, such as Internet Explorer, Chrome, and Firefox. So I have a simple document that I'm going to use as an example, scriptvideo.html. It's in your project files folder, and it plays videos when you click buttons on the web page. The videos are located here in the My Videos subfolder. So I'm going to open up the script video HTML file, first of all, in Internet Explorer. And I'll allow block content so that JavaScript is going to work properly. Now the idea is that you enter a directory name and a video name, and then you click load, and it'll load the video from the file system or from a web server, and it'll play it automatically. And then you can pause it, rewind it, fast forward, change the volume, and so on. So before I do that, I'm going to bring up the developer tools window. The way you do that in Internet Explorer is through the F12 button. So F12 brings up developer tools and gives you quite a lot of information actually about the environment of the web page and the script and the styles. It allows you to set breakpoints and so on, much like you would do in a normal programming language. So first of all, you can see on the bottom, we have various tabs here. It allows you to view the HTML for the document. So we'll do that first. We can expand the various nodes to drill down into the document structure. So I'm going to just drill down here. Each of these represents the content of the document. So I'll find the button here that represents the do load. So that when I click on this button here, this is the button in HTML. If you click on the little arrow here, then you can actually select elements like so. Okay, so that's the load button that we have. On the right hand side, it shows all the styles which apply on that button, both the ones which are defined at the high level, such as on the body, and are therefore inherited by the button, plus the rules that you defined on the button itself. And you can change these as well if you want to. For example, I can deselect an item so that the background color of yellow will no longer apply. Okay, so you can see now it's reverted back to the standard button format of gray. I can reselect it. And I could change it. So if instead of yellow, for example, I might prefer green. OK, so that's the styles. If you want to look at the whole style for the document, click on the CSS tab over here. And that will show you all the rules that you've defined in your style sheet or that you've linked in from external style sheets. And again, you can change them if you want to. So maybe you don't want the buttons to display with an orange color. Maybe you prefer red. There you go. You can also look at the console. It's a useful technique when you're writing JavaScript to have console log statements in your web page rather than having 100 alert statements popping up. Console log is a less intrusive way of charting your progress through the JavaScript in your document. So I have console log statements which have been included in my code and you can see the output here. And you can also type code here if you wanted to. For example, I could say, There you go. So it's interactive. Okay, So that's quite a useful thing to be able to do. You can look at the script as well. So I've got quite a lot of script in this example, as you can imagine, for all the various different buttons. If I just scroll down through the script. I have a do load function here on line 50 that gets called when I click the load button, this load button here. And I can set a breakpoint. So for example, I can set a breakpoint in the margin. Just click there in Internet Explorer. Very similar to Visual Studio, if you've done .NET development or some other Microsoft tool, it gives you the same kind of user interface. So once I've got my breakpoint set up, I can then start debugging. So I'll click the Start Debugging button here. So this is like the debugger, very similar to Visual Studio. If I click the Load button now, it'll call the Do Load function, and it just hit my breakpoint. In the breakpoint, you can set up a watch, so I can add expressions in here. So for example, in my JavaScript, there's a global variable called videos. And in here, I could say videos.length. Obviously, I haven't loaded any videos yet, so the video length is empty. We can have a look at local variables. So these are the local variables defined inside the count function. And you can change these as well, obviously. So I could put in something like this. And I could look at the call stack to see which functions have been called. And we can view the breakpoints, like so and the breakpoints you can manage, you can enable or disable. So once you have your breakpoint set up, what you can then do is step through the code. So this is quite traditional as well. You can step over or step into 
or step out of. So this would step into the next function, this would step over it, and this would execute the entire function and take it out of there. So I'll step over the next few functions. Now you see it's created a video element. Dynamically, it'll create a video element to display it on the screen. So if I take a look at locals now, we have new video is an object. I'll just scroll this into view a little bit more so you can see it. And you can examine and interact with all the properties on the video object. This is actually quite a good way to learn about some of the new features in HTML5. For example, there's a video element, and this shows you all the properties and functions that you have on the video element. It's quite a useful technique, actually. So what I'll do now is I'll just step out of the function, so it'll continue executing the function through the completion. I'll just do that a few more times, just to get it all running. There you go. So that's some of the developer support that we have in Internet Explorer. Lots of other cool features as well, so I'd encourage you to take a good look at that and see what's there all together. And I'll just close the window now, and I'll open up the same web page, this time in Chrome. Now Chrome has similar features. Obviously the user interface is slightly different, but again, if I use F12 to bring up developer tools, then you can view the elements in the document. Each element, you can look at the script and the styles. You can look at the resources that have been downloaded. So for example, you can see any videos or web pages that have been downloaded. If you've made use of HTML5 databases or HTML5 local storage or session storage, if your web app has any cookies, or if it makes use of any offline storage so that the application would work properly even if it wasn't connected to the internet, you can see those there. There's a network tab, which allows you to see what's been downloaded. So for example, if I click the load button here, you can see the requests that are being sent to the web server, and you can look at the timelines to see how long each particular item took to download. So that's quite useful. And there's a console window here as well, which allows you to see the console messages. So for example, if I pause or play, I have console statements in my code which show me what's happened on the console window. So Chrome is very featureful, and just quickly before we finish, I'll show you Firefox. So I'll open the same document in Firefox. With Firefox, developer tools isn't included by default, but what you have to do is to install from the internet Firebug, and then you can run Firebug via the tools menu. Tools, web developer, Firebug, open Firebug. And again, you'll notice it's the F12 button. So Firebug has the same kind of capabilities. I'll just bring it into view a bit more so you can see it. You can look at the HTML in the document. You can examine and change styles. You can look at script. You can look at the DOM tree, and so on and so forth. So all of these tools make it a lot easier for you to develop applications, and they're very useful to help you learn what's actually supported in HTML5 and CSS3, so you can be more productive as a developer.